Okay, so last thing on chemics is projectile motion. Now, projectile motion, we talk about like shooting a gun of some sort up in the air, or kicking a football, or throwing a ball, or you know, something along these lines. So, in projectile motion, so you're going to deal with some gravity issues. So, we're going to start with a projectile motion question that deals purely in the vertical direction, and then we'll deal with one that's both x and y direction. It travels in an arc, so to speak. So, but first, purely in the y direction, we'll see how, based on what we've just learned with all the kinematic stuff, how this really isn't that bad. So, let's say I have a water balloon launcher, and I launch a water balloon straight up in the air. So, and I launch it at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. Now, there's a variety of questions I can ask you. So, but one is conceptual, first of all. What will be the final velocity of this water balloon right before it hits the ground if we ignore air resistance? It's going to be 40 as well. So, the initial velocity you shoot it up with is the initial velocity it comes back down. That's why, like, you know, when you shoot guns, I say you, hopefully it's not you, but you shoot guns on New Year's Eve, you know, the bullet goes up, but it comes back down. Again, in life, we really have air resistance, so it's not quite as fast, but it's fast enough to still go right through you and kill you. So that's why you don't shoot guns up in the air. All right, so initial velocity is 40 meters per second. Right before it hits the ground, it will again be 40 meters per second. Okay, my question for you first is how long does it take before this thing hits the ground? Well, you break it up into two parts. Time it takes to get to the top, maximum height, and the time it takes back down. If it's starting out at 40 meters per second, how fast will it be going in one second? 30. 30, because gravity is pushing down. Gravity acceleration is down at 10 meters per second per second. So how long does it take to get to where its velocity is what? Up here? Zero. How long does it take to get from 40 to zero for velocity? Four seconds. Four seconds. So it's four seconds up, four seconds back down, and so your total time is eight seconds. Notice that we really use an equation for that? Well, we did. It's just the definition of acceleration equation, but we didn't really actually physically get out there and you know plug and chug an equation. So but yeah, to go from 40 down to zero, it's going to take four seconds, and it's going to be the exact same four seconds back to get from zero back to 40 again. Four seconds up, four seconds down. Okay. How far does this thing travel, i.e., what's its maximum height it reaches? So how far does it travel up, or if you want, how far does it travel down? It's the same dis displacement, right? So what is the maximum height? Well, again, there's acceleration, right? What's my personal favorite acceleration equation? So. When you have acceleration, we're getting the displacement. G average times T. That is indeed fine. So for just the journey up, what is the average velocity? 20. 20. Starts at 40, ends at 0. The average is 20. How long is the journey? Up. 4 seconds. So the total displacement. Is? 80 meters. So the maximum height it reaches is 80 meters. Cool. That's pretty much all they're going to ask about you. The big thing you should recognize here, we talk about this with throwing the marker up and stuff like that, if the acceleration always, always, always points down. So here the velocity points up, here the velocity is zero, and then the return trip back to the ground, the velocity points down. So the acceleration always points down. The question they often try and fool you with is at the top, it's the velocity. At the maximum height, the velocity is zero, but the acceleration due to gravity is still 10 meters per second per second down. That never changes. It's constant the whole way through the flight, always down 10 meters per second per second. It's the velocity that reaches zero at the, the maximum height. Okay, let's look at a two-dimensional problem now.
Okay. So here if I kick a football like I'm a punter, or I throw a football or a baseball or whatever, or if I shoot a gun off at this angle or something like that, so it's going to undergo projectile motion. Why does this thing eventually hit the ground? Gravity. Gravity. If I did this from a space station out in the middle of the solar system, not near any planets or anything, what would happen after I shot it? It would just keep going and going and going. So, cool. But it's gravity that causes this thing to reach the ground. So it is gravity in the y direction that we're going to use to figure out, you know, things like the maximum height that it reaches, or things like how long it's in the air, because it's only gravity that causes it to come, you know, out of the air, so to speak. So it's the y direction that'll give us things like that. But it's the x direction that we often deal with what we define as the range. So how far it travels horizontally, that's the range. So if we got our max height, and again, 